I'm losing money and my mind making this video. But howdy and hello, I'm Dell. Hope you're doing good. Today I want to explain how the weapon and armor system works in Wild Hearts. In case you start in the exact same spot for every single weapon, it's going to be right here, the top middle of the tree. I'll go ahead and revert my stuff. By the way, if you mess up on this tree, it's fine. All it costs you is gold. You get back all the used materials aside from the gold you spend. And it also costs you gold to go back. So gold's the only ball in that carry, basically. You start from here and you can choose. You want to go right which gives you no buff left. It gives you no buff, but you get more raw damage or you're going to go bottom. Now you get inherited skills. So before we go anywhere though, I want to explain what the top right symbols are. So top, top right, you have a sword icon. That's your raw damage. Below that, you have an elemental icon. That's your elemental damage. In this case, there's wood, there's wind, there's water, there's fire, and then there's earth. Those are the icons. Hopefully that makes sense. And then below that, you have crit chance. These weapons have 0% crit chance. Sag, 5%. The most I've seen was 25%. And the least I've seen was, I think it was like around 20%. But in this case, minus 10. So you can have negative crit chance. You can have positive crit chance. It all depends on where you're going. Then you have inherited skills. Your passive inherited skill, that's something you can't change. It's just about where you're ending up at. So in this case, nimbled fingered, final blow surprise attack like those are all your passive inherited skills it's, it's the top inherited skill then you have your active inherited skills i call them active because you have to actively worry about what the next weapon is going to have and how you want to transfer them over and whatnot and that matters and by the way a uh, rule of thumb for the most part it doesn't work all the time but red is damage when it comes to these skills green is some type of survivability orange is stamina and yellow is element at least like for the active inherited skills. Like in this case, wood wilt is yellow. And so is fire wilt. As soon as I find that, oh, see earth wilt, yellow. There's no active skills, so I don't, I don't have to press any other buttons here. But now I have to worry about some stuff. I can go left, I get noble finger to go right. I get crit master, crit master is crit chance. Savage is damage. We'll go right for fun. On left, I, I do get more raw damage though. So that's a factor to keep in mind. Going right, we carry over savage, chillin, upgrade. I'm gonna go bottom here. I'm gonna carry over Crit Master because I like more crit chance. I'll have two Crit Masters chilling. And then now we can go left or right. I'll go left for fun. Why not? We have Arm Spirit. At the bottom, we have Wood Wilt. I only want Wood Wilt. I don't really care that much about it. I'm not really sure how good it is, to be honest. Bear Thread Stamina. I don't need that in my case. I want damage. This is the third time this chicken has done that to me this is not a safe area this is not a safe neighborhood any node that's connected by the way with a line you can go that direction even up here which i'll show you in like a second i guess but carrying over crit master also this icon where it's like the uh like this slashing icon same as the top right that's crit chance of some kind so strong arm spirit that gives you yeah it boosts the chance of landing critical hits for a while when a hunter's arm has been activated i'm gonna carry over crit master because i'm like if it says four percent i assume it gets it just gives you four percent crit chance if you activate your your hunter's arm this is just like a, a raw three percent i think that's how it works and i'd rather have just raw if it's only gonna be one percent less so the, the sick thing about this tree you could even go top left you can go to any node that connects if you go backwards though that's the only time you don't progress instead it just costs you money to revert like i said earlier so that is what you have to keep in mind. Now, the other big thing to keep in mind is the journey and also the destination. The journey being all the active inherited skills you pick up along the way. The destination being where you want to end up. When you just start the game, it's not that big a deal. Instead, worry about the element you're using, whether it's raw or I guess neutral, or if it's an actual element and also what you're going to be fighting with the element. Because if you're fighting a monster that's strong against, in this case, we'll go with like a an easier one. If you're fighting a monster strong against fire and you have a fire weapon, not ideal. Not ideal at all. By the way, just because you have a fire weapon does not mean you can actually... I don't think you can you can trigger the fire effect. But if you have something like Flame Wielder, this makes it possible to set Kimono ablaze by landing hits. There's, there's uh, like basically every element, every, every element has a buff like that. So just having fire, it just means you're doing extra damage versus monsters that are weak to fire. But if you have Flame Wielder, you can actually trigger fire. If you have... What's the other one? I know there's one for freezing. Ice Wielder. It means you can trigger... To leave Kimono frozen. That I've never done that. That sounds dope AF. There's other buffs that play into that. And the elemental aspect is very confusing outside of just run X element because it's strong versus X Behemoth or Kimono. 
but it gets more complex because there's earth wilt there's fire booze it's weird a lot goes into that we have another thing to talk about that's going to be this these buffs that are grayed out and they have icons next to them that is where armor comes into play so hopefully the weapons make sense if not i stream on twitch.tv slash odo ask me questions there, i'll explain better i i've tried my best i've legit remade this video so many times but moving on to I heard the chicken, I swear to God. Moving on to armor. At the bottom of your screen, just look at that. Because everywhere else, it can get kind of confusing for your pathing. But the top right of your screen, you have your, your raw armor. Or your raw defense, I guess. Below that, you have your pathing, but it's confusing looking at the top right. And then you have your elemental resi resistances, which just determines if you're going to get smoked or not by the monster you're fighting. And there's five elements. There's wood, fire, water, wind, and earth. At the bottom here, if you change your armor, it'll show you where your pathing will change to. I guess more defined, like yellow arrow at the bottom there, that's showing you where you're moving towards. So this armor moves me to a whole different path. The right side of pathing, by the way, that's kimono. Left side's human. At the top of the screen, you see these different like pathings as well, these modifications. Going right gives you even more, usually, a pathing. These are important because these trigger certain buffs. You'll have buffs that are locked away depending on the path you have. So in this case, two of these are human path. And there's some gear that has multiple different pathings. Like one, one piece of gear has legit every single path known to humankind, which may seem like, oh, it's sick. I, I can activate all the buffs at the same time. You can't do that. As far as I'm aware, you can only have one buff active at a time. Just making sure we all understand when you have the pure human path on the far left, the purple icon, you also get the buffs from the blue human, which is the regular human path. If you're going far right, you have the pure kimono, the red icon, you also get buffs from the orange kimono the whole way. So in this case, I'm purple samurai guy. And as we can see, the one stroke pause critical is activated. 43% extra chance to crit or I think it's like around 20 seconds. I'm not too sure. It could be shorter than that, but it's freaking fun. Armor is important early game because you want to focus on what the raw buffs give you. In my case, I've never focused on what these other buffs, like what the, uh, the pathing buffs give you. Although some of the gear is pretty good, especially early on. But I just went with whatever gave me damage buffs. Aside from that, you also want to look at the raw armor. Because going from, in this case, 23 armor to 50 is nice. My current set isn't my main set. My current set is for farming gear. So I'll go ahead and show you what my current set looks like. Uh, I have a lot of... Uh, well, not a lot, but I have like a lot of destruction. And I have these two buffs. These are for farming materials. You can see your raw armor and whatnot by going to this menu. So talismans can be obtained from just killing monsters. You also can get uh, specific ones on the maps. And talismans are pretty freaking sick. In this case, I have Strong Arm Spirit. That gives me crit chance for using my Hunter's Arm. Destruction Art, Destruction Art, Destruction Art. And then Recovery Boost. Recovery Boost, you get more healing from using healing items, I believe. It just increases the raw amount of health received. Which, this one's crazy. And this was actually gotten from one of the Samurai Swords on the maps. If we look, if we look for Talismans, the best thing I can say is there's a Katakuri upgrade. That makes your satellite dish nuts. Enables hunting towers to detect the location of documents and Tsukumo. Activate a tower. And because I have a bunch of towers set up over the place, I have a lot more range. Now, activating one tower activates all the ones in range, I believe. But all these question marks are ones I haven't found. In any case, that's the video. Hopefully, it was jam-packed with information. It helped you out. If it did, a like and a comment goes a long way. Be sure to check out the Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash odo. And aside from that, have a beautiful day. I'll catch you all later. Peace.